This is Greg, once again, at the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom in Hampton, New Hampshire. And I'm here with NECR, New England Concert Reviews.com. And I am sitting and have the privilege to be speaking with John Allen, the vocalist for Charm City Devils. Hello, and thanks for taking the time to speak with us here at NECR. What's been going on? Uh, my pleasure, man, my pleasure. Uh, just, uh, you know, doing some shows, uh, been recording for the new record, and uh, pulled out for some East Coast stuff since we're just... Uh, just down 95 a little bit from you know Baltimore, Maryland. Not too far of a you know trek for us. So glad to be here, man. I had the pleasure of playing the ballroom. Uh, ah, gosh, eight eight or nine years ago, and uh, good to be back. For those who may not have heard of you guys, can you tell us a little bit about Charm City Devils? Yeah, I mean, you know, we we uh, the band really came to, into being about 2008. We we got it. We you know we're a straight up rock band from Baltimore. We um, Pretty much out of the blocks. Not too long after the inception of of, of this lineup, we had signed uh, by Nikki Six, signed to Eleven Seven Music, and went out on uh, Crew Fest Two in 2009, 2009 and had the great um, opportunity to to play on the main stage all summer long, opening for Motley Crue, Godsmack, Theory of a Dead Man, Drowning Pool, and it was us on the on the main stage, and that was a blast, an eye-opening experience, you know, for me. I played drums in, in a bunch of different bands, and uh, it was my first real touring experience as a singer, you know, a front man, out, you know, out there, with nothing to, to bang on. So it was it was a it was an incredible first tour for being a singer to be playing amphitheaters all across the country. It was just it was a trip. That's outstanding. It, was, it sounds it was, like a blast. It was bizarre, man. It was like it wasn't real, you know. I, I kept waiting for somebody to wake me up from a dream, you know. Insane. <laughs> Let's talk about your recent release, Sins. What was it like recording this CD? Um, it was a very quick process. We, uh, my friend, owned this label called uh, he owns still owns. It's called Fat Lady Music. We had been talking about doing a record together for maybe about a year, and he had another artist uh, named Egypt Central, and they had, they had broken. I guess uh, they had done really well two summers ago. They had a hit, and uh, he was like, okay. You know, you gotta, you gotta go do a record right now because the label's hot. You know, we gotta move. And I was like, oh shit, okay. <laughs> I didn't know we were there yet. And within a month, we, uh, we, we pulled up stakes and we, we ran down to Nashville and we recorded a record in, in three weeks. And a record that the producer was like, this is a six-week record and we're, we're squeezing it into three weeks. So, uh, you know, it was, it was a very, uh, very fast process and it, you know, it, it took a lot of work and we. But it was it was a fun process and and uh, and I think we raised the raised the bar on you know from from our first record and the first recordings. Well, walk away. It has a reflection type feel to it. Mm -hmm. What is the story behind this song? You know, it, it just it's it's a relationship song and it's about you know um, you know I I just kind of uh, I guess. I've been in a, a good relationship for a very long time, so I, I, I kind of put myself in a mindset of back when uh, when I was dating a girl who, you know, like, you know, I, I had some, some issues with, and, and that's, you know, everybody can, I think, relate to, to that, you know, relationships gone wrong types of songs, so that's really where the, the crux of that story storyline uh, falls. The track Problem is also very unique. Yeah. What was it like writing that particular track? Well, that was a, a really cool, um, that's, it's funny you picked up on that one. It, that's a fun, uh, an interesting story. Jason, our drummer, had that lyric, it was, it was uh, in a dream. He, uh, the, the, the opening lyric, um, you know, you're not my parachute, you're my lead brick, you know, kind of thing. And he was fighting in his dream with his boss. You know it, it, where he works, and uh, who's actually a really good friend of his too. So it was like this kind of, it was this interesting thing. He was telling me about it, and he kind of had he had like the verse, uh, lyric, melody, and then I built the song around that. You know, I, I had the chorus like sitting around. I was like, that might be cool for this song, and we basically put that song together like really quickly. Another great track is still alive. How much soul searching do you incorporate, not in just this song, but in every song you guys produce? You know, I don't know. So you know, sometimes it, it's uh, there's a lot involved. Like with that one, now it's about my. You know, I had skin cancer, and and uh, 
um, right after the, the crew fest tour and um, I had a, a two-year-old and I had a four-year-old at home and my thought process was it was out of my hands either the doctor's gonna get you know all the cancer or he's not you know and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm a goner and uh, but my thought process was what happens with my daughters and will they remember me and how bad is this gonna how badly is this gonna affect their their psyche and their upbringing or whatever and, and you know that's that song is really about that so it's it's a pretty heavy subject it's a pretty heavy song you know we have some of those songs like that on this record but then there are also songs that are more, more fun I think or I don't know maybe live were, were more fun and, and, and rock I, there are there's some I guess there's some anger and there's some some deep issues on that record I don't know <laughs> thinking about it maybe we all have some of them so yeah. you're not alone yeah. going back to your first single Man of Constant Sorrow mm -hmm. the song has a bluegrass origination mm -hmm. yet you did a great job putting a rock twist on it how challenging was that um, you know, I have to give credit to our producer for really kind of giving it that eerie vibe with the backwards vocal and the intro, you know, and uh, just making it making it so kind of creepy feeling and dark. I originally, when we were talking about doing that song, I had it up tempo. It was probably a, a double double the, the tempo that it it is on the record. And he's the one who kind of broke it down into that slower, uh, mean kind of groove and gave it that, that darkness. You know, he kept my, my chorus riff that I had, and, um, but he, he really built that track, uh, you know, in, in a way that, that made it, you know, kind of what you hear. You know, I, he, he did a fantastic job on that, I, I really have to say. Yeah, it's a great song. I mean, mm -hmm. I listen to it over and over. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. You come out with your debut album. Mm -hmm. And then you release your second. Right. During that transition between compilations, how much do you feel the band has progressed as artists? You know, it's it's well uh, hugely. The first record was um, was really me mostly writing all the material, and and a lot of that stuff is demo material that I that I demoed in my house that I played a lot of the instrumentation on. Now when I when I solidified the lineup in, in 07 or 08, whatever it was, uh, I had the guys like, you know, put their parts, the guitar parts and bass parts over top, burned over my, my terrible tracks. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, and then and then Jason played drums on it on a, a, a two or three of the tracks on that record. Um, so that was really kinda like a, a John Allen record, I think, in a lot of respects, where Sins is more of a group effort. It's uh, you're hearing a lot of like killer, you know, riffs, that, you know, and killer style of, of playing between Anthony on bass, Victor on guitar, and and uh, you know, and, and Nick on 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 guitar. You know, you're hearing a a, a, a more you know a more overall band effort, and you're hearing. Their styles represent it more in, the, in, in on the second record, uh, uh, more so than the first, I believe. I would assume that, you know, going from one, I mean, whether you've done 13 or 14 CDs or whatever, I get the feeling you kind of grow with each one anyways. Well, you hope so. I mean, I, and, and that's that's the hope. Well, I mean, we were shooting for, uh, in, in, in all aspects, I, I'm singing, like, with a greater range on this record. I'm singing higher, and I'm singing lower, in, 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 you know, all over this record, more so than the first. Uh, you know, we are trying to stretch the boundaries and the musicianship, my vocals, uh, production was better. Uh, in, in all aspects, we were really trying, we were trying to raise the songwriting uh, to, a, to a higher standard. You know, so th that's what you, you, you know, we were shooting for. You know, we were shooting for the stars and, you know, that, that, was, our, that was our attempt. I'll tell you, I, li I like Sins a lot. And, Thank you. Um, and I was like... Wow, this, these guys are really, really good. Tight too, very tight. And Thank it, you. And it, it, that's you know, a lot of bands take time to get to that point. It seems mm -hmm. like this is your, you know, your second CD, and you mm -hmm. you pretty much nailed it. You know. Thank you. 
I gotta ask you this. How does the band feel about one of your singles being used for the WWE? Uh, it's great. I mean, it's great exposure. You know, when you have a song like Unstoppable, you think, okay, this is one that can be, you know, yeah. it's called placements. It could be up for placements with sports teams and different sporting events. And the WWE, you know, uh, you know, called us a, well, actually, we didn't, we didn't even find out about it. Like, fans of ours heard it on a uh, commercial and and they were playing it i guess in the background on one of the we were out on tour and started fans started hitting us up and i was like really and then the next day they were like hey you know we want to use your song for as the theme song for the no way out uh pay-per-view thing and we were like cool you know it's just another way to get your music out there you know uh it, it's it's you know it's, it's always difficult sometimes as a new artist to kind of get heard and to get your uh get your music or your or if you have a message your message out we don't really i don't think we have a message but you know uh, but to get out there and make a connection so it, yeah it's all good it's still pretty cool though, yeah you know? thank you who are some of your or the band's musical influences uh you know it really runs the gamut i mean you know i love and, and everything from I, I really love like uh robert johnson the old blues stuff blind willie johnson you know i love uh, how Jack White kind of took that blue stuff and punk rock and kind of, you know, put it together and kind of turned it on its head, you know. I love the Black Keys. I love, you know, that, anything that's kind of raw and sounds real to me, you know, in a way. Like, just, uh, I, I, that's, you know, stuff I love, you know, really love Zeppelin. Um, Probably one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, I mean, you can't you can get no higher right there, you know. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I mean, and and I know Nick's like Sabbath, you know, Tony Iommi is a huge influence on him, and Victor, you know, uh, uh, James Gang was was a favorite of his with, with a slide and a talk box and stuff. So Joe Walsh and um, Black Crows. Jason, you know, our drummer loves Bonham. He loves Dave Grohl and Foo Fighters. He's totally gay for Dave Grohl. Um, <laughs> just loves him to death. He, he feels like he can do no wrong, and the, he can't. He can't. He, he, that guy can do no wrong. Um, you know, Queens of the Stone Age, Anthony, Rage Against the Machine. You know, I don't know, Zeppelin, same thing. Kind of, you know, ACDC is a huge influence on me. I think in a lot of ways. You know, and then. I mean, it's just there's there's so much music. So I'm such a I'm such a fan of music, you know, and the and the rock and hard rock, blues, blues rock. I mean, it it all probably is is creeped into you know what we do here or there somewhere. Somebody told me, you know, like we reminded them something about us about like Metallica, and and I was a huge Metallica fan. I've ne you know I've only heard I've heard that twice now, and it's it's very surprising because I don't think of us at all in that in that way but i'll take it i mean that's a they're unbelievable you know? well i mean like you said you incorporate a lot so if metallica influenced you you, you got to think to yourself or or anyone who listens to your stuff they got to kind of try to you know pull it out of there somewhere right you know what i mean yeah. there's got to be a little hint of it in there yeah you guys seem to integrate the blues in your music mm -hmm. How does that impact what you write? You incorporate it more, I would say, than most. So, yeah. I mean, do, do you focus on the blues aspect only, or is it, you know, do you incorporate other genres in there as your, does that make sense? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I don't know, like I said, I, I just have such an affinity for it, and, and the bands that, like I'm a history geek, so when I read about Rolling Stones or Led Zeppelin, that's how I discovered Robert Johnson. Because all these guys, all the, the classic guys, you know, Eric Clapton from the '60s, the guys who became icons, they kept referencing this guy. You know, in England at the time, we were all listening to Robert Johnson. You know, and I was like, who is Robert Johnson? Like, I gotta find this. You know, find out who this guy is. And uh, so I did my research, got like the Robert Johnson box set. And uh, and you can hear it, you know. You can hear like the, a lot of kind of Zeppelin-y kind of things in, in there. Like you know, it's a trip to hear where it all comes from, you know. And then and, and, and how it progresses. And how it progresses and how it mutates and you know like it's just it's just interesting to me. Like I last year while we were on tour, I was reading about uh, Dwayne Allman, and it really made me aware of like 
what a force he was and what a player he was and how his playing influenced rock and even pop kind of across the board from I guess around 1971 on like I'll listen to some of those classic songs from other artists now and I go oh, that's really kind of Dwayne Allman-esque like he he really you know with the contemporaries kind of picking up on what that guy was doing you know like everybody's like you know the, the, to hear those influences you know and I was just talking to Nick about like we, we heard Paranoid by Sabbath on uh, on the radio the other day and I was like man you know this song is just I've heard it so many times but I still like I'm I still find myself cranking it up, you know. It's it's just it's so fucking good, <laughs> right? And I'm and I'm thinking like that record came out I guess in 1970, and I'm thinking about what was going on and what like because they they were like they out heavied the heaviest bands, which and what was the heaviest band? I guess it was like you know Zeppelin and maybe Deep Purple at that time or something, but like just the the gun 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 you know the the eighth note uh, chug on that guitar does that maybe come from them hearing communication breakdown when it, you know from 1968 or 69 you know like does that maybe influence Tony Iommi and, and make them think oh we can do this but we can do it darker and heavier I don't know you know I, I'm just a, it's an observation where I'm like thinking like it's so cool like to, to think like you know where it all comes from you know where it stems from it's it's just it's interesting to me and like i said i'm just a huge music fan i was six years old <laughs> when, uh, when sabbath came out and i basically grew up and you're right because you know what they were and, and i'm thinking about it as you were talking about it they were for that time probably the heaviest metal band going i mean mm -hmm. you've got the who you got yeah. Zeppelin, uh, you know, Pink Floyd, yes and no, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just Hendrix, of course, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you had a lot of, but those guys really were. I mean. And, and for the stuff to, I'm sorry to cut you off, but, no. and for that stuff to be, to still hold up now, you know, it's amazing to me. And generation after generation, I think, are still discovering, <laughs> you know, those records. I mean, it's just, it's mm -hmm. mind boggling. It's, a, you know, it's very humbling. It's like playing this place and you see the placards up there, of, you know, Zeppelin playing here and Janis Joplin, you know, you're just like, wow, man, you're just. It, 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 it's it's very very humbling it to is, be in the same it is. hallowed halls of the, as that. Is there anything you'd like the fans to know about Charm City Devils? They may not know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what they do know. <laughs> I don't think. That, I don't think we're. I don't think we're that well known for anybody to know anything about us. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. Just check out the record, and then you know, if you're if you're a fan of of you know rock and like bands like we've toured with, like Theory of a Dead Man, Hinder, you know, Motley. You know, ACDC, Zeppelin. You know, if you're fans of those bands, I think you you dig the record. You know, hit us up on Facebook. We we always write people back. You know, we we uh, we hang out after the shows. We go to the merch area. We hang out, and talk to everybody. We don't go hiding in the dressing room or anything like that. Cause it's just it's about making connections, man. Connection with people, and that's that's what you know music is about. And and you know I, I enjoy it, man. I just I like getting out there and, and, and talking to people and hanging out and you know making Throwing, making new friends. That's you know? right, man. That's what it's about. What is next for you guys? And has the writing process begun for yet another CD? Yeah, the the writing process has begun. Um, I think we have a, I think we're about one or two songs away from having a record. And you know, I've demoed a bunch of stuff, and uh, we're making plans right now to try and get into the studio and have it done by. We're hoping by February to have it out in April, if if everything goes right. Yeah. So yeah, it's just you know, it, it's it's an ongoing process. We try to. Last year was very difficult writing on the road because we were in this van, you know, and doing the driving ourselves and just like just trying to steal sleep when we when we could. Um, so when I got home, I, I dug in and started started the process like all over again. It's crazy. <laughs> you kind of just have to relearn everything and, and start from scratch. It feels like a lot of times. So, so I, I envy bands that can do that don't have to do that. That, that can write on the road and and kind of you know one of the older bands when I was still playing drums, we we actually had a little studio set up in, in our tour bus and it was fantastic to have that kind of luxury again. Would would be would be just 
Well, you'll Killer. get there, man. So, you guys yeah. will get there. You got some pretty solid stuff, and Thank you, man. I loved Thank it a you. lot. And um, I can't wait to see you guys play tonight. Cool, man. Cool. Uh, we've been speaking with John Allen, vocalist for Charm City Devils, and I'm gonna let him go. And I would like to thank him, and I wish him, the band. Best of luck in the future. I hope all goes well for you guys. It has been enjoyable. Awesome, man. So I appreciate it. Thanks, Have a Greg. good show tonight. And you, uh, we'll be talking, man. Awesome, brother. All right.